The following is a presentation of TFNN. The P Power Trading Hour with your host, David White. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Now, David White. And welcome all to another exciting edition of the Power Trading Hour with me, your humble, lovable, and squeezably soft host. As always, we like to come to you at this time. The following takes place between 2 p.m. and 3 p.m. So what do we have going on? We're up uh, six points on the S&P cash. Uh, again, volume very light, 3.5 billion shares as we uh, go and start the show. There's no real juice higher, uh, but we're in a kind of a, a, a path right now where if the market was headed lower, it probably would have uh, crested uh, by 2 o'clock on Wednesday. Uh, now we're going into two things, which is the FOMC meeting uh, next Wednesday and, of course, uh, fund buying after that. Uh, I can imagine that we could be up a couple of points every day on the S&P cash until that FOMC meeting now. Um, you know, it's like a storm. You get the warning and it just kind of veers off and goes somewhere else. I don't think that there's anything that I'd want to buy and be long uh, going into the FOMC meeting. Uh, there may be some tar uh, targets of opportunity that present itself, but uh, had a, a lot of positions and uh, uh, just covered them or got out of them, let me put it that way. Uh, and, of course, a lot of dog stocks uh, that have been down uh, really being pushed higher today. Netflix is one of those, uh, up about three and a third percent. Uh, we also have a lot of earnings. We'll go through those today and then take a uh, peek at what's happening tonight and tomorrow morning. Uh, but uh, that's about it. Um, yeah, if you're long, can you make a little money? You probably can. But, man, there's a lot of stocks here that look absolutely horrible. Uh, but, uh, you know, we should – we hit a bunch of uh, the the bottom parts of the 3 by 3 over the last couple of days, and they've kind of gotten back in there, uh, which makes me think that the market's at least at worst going to go sideways and maybe even up just a tad into the FOMC meeting. Uh, we got, uh, of course, some big guys out after the earnings. Uh, Tesla, one of the more interesting ones, they've changed their earnings report to 5 uh o'clock and then of course their conference called at 5 15 so no one can have any time to actually ask them any questions uh, and, and perfectly legal but gives you an idea of uh, how fast and loose mr musk has to play with mr T um, with tesla but again um high short interest stocks you got to really uh keep an eye on them we had a, a really good one in the tech insider where we started shorting the thing around 340 dollars uh, and uh, I think we shorted all the way down to about uh, 295 ish or something. Kind of, it's uh, 290, 295. And then wrote it down to about 230. So we had more than 100 bucks or around 100 bucks from the top where we started adding positions in it. Uh, one of the clearer trades of this year. Uh, things are a little bit more foggy as we start the show today. Uh, but like I said, there just isn't much going on uh, right now to hang your hat on. Um, we've had options roll over uh, both days that kind of pushed it up. Uh, today could be the end of options rollover with all the uh, light volume we've had this week, the lack of volume we've had this week. Uh, but we're not seeing that. Uh, the market generally by 2 o'clock, maybe at the worst, 2.30. Uh, we'll roll uh, into these if you're going to get a, uh, an air pocket or something. We haven't seen that yet, so uh, it's just time to take my uh, lumps uh, on uh, this. And, of course, uh, if you want to look at the S&P, not really that much of a range since I started getting bearish to the point where uh, we got out today. Uh, you know, we, we wanted and went for the spike, but... Again, uh, just not much out there. Everybody believes that the Fed will always have their back. 
question is what happens next Wednesday when we get a quarter point raise and uh, the people that were pushing the half a point raise um, get disappointed or we get half a point uh, cut, excuse me, and everybody is shocked that the end of the world is coming and they sell the news. Uh, but very tough to get excited about uh, going long here uh, with minuscule amounts of a volume throughout the day. And again, very few people uh, very worried about lower prices. And I suspect it's because so many of them have been buying on the way up uh, that they probably don't think that they would be in a losing position tomorrow if the market turned south or any day if the market turned south. I think they think that they would have time. Uh, that's always a very dangerous part of the market. Uh, we were talking about the SMHs in the newsletter uh, today, and I was going, okay, if, um, if this rolls back, then probably before the close today, probably pretty good indication that all the shorts have been run out of the market in this one. Um, we're about 123. Uh, it looks strong, but a lot of times that strength is just when you keep running shorts until they give up. But it certainly looked like I was watching the tape today. There aren't a lot of shorts uh, going after SMHs uh, up man, about 2.5%. Uh, a lot of other things are going on out here. Uh, I thought real estate was rather weak. Um, we bought uh, uh, puts on the B&Q, which is kind of the REITs and, the, and that point. Made a little money on that one. Lost in a couple of the other ones. So can't say it was a great week, but, you know, it didn't really go bankrupt either, even slightly. Um, so, again, just kind of a week where not much really happening, kind of hard to watch. Again, if you see uh, SMH is closed below 122.50, uh, keep an eye on it. I don't see that happening right now just because I don't see much happening at all. And generally, like I said, if you're going to get a sell-off on a Wednesday, it normally happens by now. We haven't got it, and they pulled it back a couple of times, and that's been it. But uh, not a lot else happening. Uh, do, 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 do. Okay, what else do we have? And that's about it for the moment. Uh, of course, the big news in the market, I guess, right now for me is the continuing strength in the dollar ninety-seven forty. Let's call it ninety-seven forty-four. Uh, when we go back and look at the TLT uh, for the uh, bonds, where are you, Mr. TLT? Where's my list? Come on. I know you're in there. And it kind of flat 131.65, getting ready to go to the break. See if there's anything else. Of course, uh, we'll talk more about it. Like I said, uh, Tesla after the bell at 5 o'clock tonight. Uh, and, of course, uh, fake book, PayPal. Uh, Ford, Xilinx, Align Technology, ServiceNow, Las Vegas, Sands, Six Flags, uh, O'Reilly Automotive, uh, F5 Networks, Citrix Systems, Netgear, After the Bell. We'll be back. If you're not currently using the TAS Profile Scanner when looking at setting up your trading opportunities, then your arsenal is short a mighty weapon. The TAS Profile Scanner is a standalone piece of software that instantly filters over 2,500 global financial markets such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Headed by Steve Dahl, TAS understands that in today's technological world, the use of top-flight software applications and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading in today's market. You also gain access to the webinar that Steve Dahl and Tom O'Brien just hosted, The Best Way to Use the TAS Profile Scanner to Profit. This webinar archive is available for all subscribers immediately upon signing up. All new subscriptions also come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to risk. Start your subscription by visiting the front page of TFNN.com today and you'll find the Task Profile Scanner under the Services tab. Sign up today. 
Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value, or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay Area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LLC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN has launched our brand new website. You can still visit us at the same TFNN.com URL, but when you do, you'll see a new and improved homepage with a much simpler navigation, whether you're watching Tiger TV live in high definition or just accessing your newsletter subscriptions. We even have new pricing in six months and yearly options. Check out the new TFNN.com now and experience all the upgrades. TFNN.com, educating investors. Call, call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. And we're back. Uh, let's see what we just check in here real quickly and see. Now we're at uh, 3,011 and... and uh, half a point. I like the uh, risk reward yesterday being short. You know, you're up six points on the S&P cash, 35 on the NASDAQ. Uh, was really kind of interested in the way that NASDAQ uh, uh, worked against or uh, ignored the news uh, this morning. We'll talk about that today. In the meantime, what we're going to do is a little history and then get moving on. And it's all just a little bit of history repeating. Fifty years ago today at 1251 Eastern Daylight Time, Apollo 11, the U.S. spacecraft that had taken the first astronauts to the surface of the moon, safely returns to Earth. The American effort to send astronauts to the moon had its origins in famous appeal of President uh, Kennedy's uh, admission. What would you call it? Eh. Challenge, I guess. Challenge to America. I believe this great nation should commit itself to achieving the goal before this decade is out of landing a man on the moon and returning him safely to Earth on this day in 1969. Uh, fulfilled that promise and also uh, got rid of just about any excuse for anything else. Since then, it's always been, well, if you can land a man on the moon, you should be able to do this or that. So kind of like that. And of course, computers used to always be down. That was a good excuse. Between that and this, uh, I thought it was a, kind of in the top 10 of excuses. Back to 1969, 50 years ago today. Okay, um, what do we want to get into? Uh, first thing I want to do is take a look at the Tesla. Always love people that talk about things like the Google and the Facebook and the Snapchat, there's a the and everything in front of it. Um, always tells you something about the people and their technological skills uh, or what century that they were born in. Tesla up just a little bit. You've got volume that really has been uh, decaying since uh, back here on, we'll call it June 5th. Uh, and again, energy is off by about 40%. 
Um, I've been thinking for a long time this is going to be a big ABC on the way down on the next move. Uh, one of the reasons why is uh, ALB, which is uh, one of the big um, uh, producers of lithium for lithium ion batteries, maybe something else is going on that I'm unaware of. Uh, that one today is actually closing its gap down of May 8th that had almost 4 million shares. Got into it today with 437,000 shares. Again, uh, probably a lot to do with what Tesla says tonight. Uh, they have, as uh, anybody that's listened to the show knows, I like to watch the uh, uh, House of Commons on Sunday night occasionally uh, where uh, everybody gets to yell and scream at the prime minister. And uh, the only thing they can't do is call you a liar. So there's a thousand different ways to call people a liar without calling them a liar. And it's always, uh, the one I always liked the best was, you have an economy with the truth, sir. Uh, a bunch of other things. But it's always, uh, you know, tell them how great they are and then stab them in the back. Um, a lot of political theater, but it's enjoyable sometimes. Kind of talk wrestling at a high level. You know, kind of like Marcus of Queensberry Rules, where they have their fists the back of their fist to people. I never understood how that was actually supposed to work. Doesn't seem like a very smart idea to box that way, but they do. Anyway, uh, back to Tesla, already in progress over the most of TFNN. Uh, again, uh, you could look at this as a huge ABC on the way down, but generally after you have a big move like this, uh, you wanna be looking at a, a kind of a longer term move yeah, let's see what I have out here. The um, way I look at it is this gap down is the first one. Da, 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 da. Eh. Yeah, so let's see, take a look at that one. That's A. We'll make this one B here. And we'll just say today's high is C. Um, I think you could get yet uh, a little bit more of a squeeze. And the reason why is there's this gap up here at about 290. And I think that's where maximum resistance is going to come in. And certainly we can, we can look at it that way. Uh, what else? <laughs> well, I'm sure that's not the symbol, Mr. Engineer. Is there another symbol out there? Maybe. Okay, that one's much better. Uh, Mr. Engineer just gave me a nasty little message uh, telling me someone's calling in. Uh, why don't we just go ahead uh, to Dave in Massachusetts. How you doing? Hi. Thanks, David. Yeah. Can you take a look at AKS here and see where it's headed? It looks like it's trending up. You know, things are looking a little bit better uh, for these steel stocks, but Again, this is all about whether or not you get a trade deal, and I don't think that's going to change until it happens. I don't think we get a trade deal for at least three months, if not six or nine months or a year uh, into the future. It, these, they, the State Department is all about dragging things out at a glacial spate, pace. Uh, you get, don't have a lot of volume as you're breaking through uh, the July 1st high that had 12 million shares. You got, uh, what, uh, four and a half million shares now? Uh, going up into the high of May 6th, which had almost 12 million shares. So, you know, you had a nice day, had a couple of nice days, actually. But I, I don't see the demand changing. Uh, either you need, uh, well, I think either way the trade deal goes, it's probably good for U.S. Steel. Not the company, but steel from the U.S., uh, but until that happens, I don't think that there's a great deal going on. You do have the opportunity here for an ABC. I would have liked to have seen a lot more volume um, breaking this July 1st high. Not bad. A one-to-one -one takes you to $2.81. Um, but I don't know. Where are you in on this? I'm, I got in around 170 175 Where are we planning on selling them? Uh, when it gets back up to about five. Okay. It did well, that back in 2016, but 
The thing here is that Donald Trump last week signed something saying that any federal, um, the federal government will only buy American steel. That's what's kind of positive. Yeah, but I don't think I don't think that's enforceable. Well, he's already signed gotta, it. It went huh? through. You know, they can only buy American steel, fed the federal government for buildings and whatever. Yeah, you know? but since you know how Congress works, right? All spending right. bills have to come from the House. You know, they can't. He, he can say, sign that, and maybe they can fight him, but I don't know how much you can enforce that. Yeah. So, so that's it. That's why I'm saying this uh, a, a, a true trade agreement would be something that would be huge. All right. We'll be okay. back in a minute. But I'm going to stick with this one. Okay. Thank you, Dave. The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter. And if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss Miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. Hi folks, Tom O'Brien here. If you'd like to get my daily newsletter, Market Insights, then now is a great time to sign up for a 30-day free trial. Every morning by 9.30, I send out my morning letter to subscribers with market commentary on a variety of markets, currencies, and commodities to keep investors up to date on the day's trading action. Included in Market Insights are specific buy and sell recommendations for stocks, ETFs, and even options, with stops and price targets included for every trade in my newsletter. If you'd like to try my newsletter risk-free for 30 days, then head over over to the front page of TFNN and you'll find market insights under trading newsletters. I use my years of trading experience to bisect and dissect the market every morning and give my subscribers the most important information they need to know for the day ahead. I even issue afternoon updates for my subscribers whenever warranted with important market action. I'm always scouring the market for the next great trading opportunity. Sign up for your 30-day free trial to my daily newsletter, Market Insights, today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Wow! Go get them, folks! TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. And we're back. I had a question about uh, Slack. So we'll uh, look at that. Um... Work is the symbol on that, by the way. You know, you've had a bounce a day or two here, but uh, we covered this kind of uh, succinctly when it went public, and I, my opinion hasn't changed. That is, you, you can't really short these things. One, it's an IPO, but uh, two, uh, it's probably going to be bought out by somebody else, 
uh, if it continues down the road that it's on. So you always have to wake up thinking that maybe you could do that. But by itself, um, just like LinkedIn, eventually these guys figure out that unless they're one of the big uh, boys on the street like Facebook or the rest, uh, that it events, eventually ends up being problematic uh, trying to go it alone and not a big platform. But of course, uh, today we also had another issue with uh, uh, with uh, with uh, all the big companies uh, finding out that there's a massive antitrust uh, investigation for all the big four. Uh, except Microsoft. I wanted to see how it did. It's really kind of avoided it. But uh, Facebook uh, and Apple and Amazon uh, all have a multitude of sins that they've already admitted to. So the question is, uh, are there some more things out there? Generally, the Justice Department uh, already knows what they're going after when they announce something like this. Uh, the question is, I suspect uh, that there just isn't a lot of thought as to uh, whether or not it's going to happen this year. Generally, these things plot along, but once they get started, they don't go away. Um, and again, there's so many reported versions of this. Uh, of course, uh, we knew a week ago that Facebook was paying $5 billion. Uh, and I don't know if you can say anything other than that. You pay $5 billion. Uh, it's kind of the equivalent of uh, Bhopal, where Union Carbide killed all those folks at the uh, chemical center. I mean, pretty m much a, a, a tacit agreement that you are a serial killer, uh, at least in whatever you're doing, whatever business you're in, whether it was chemicals or uh, privacy. Uh, but Microsoft kind of the least a bit, of course, Facebook after the bell tonight. And it seems to be kind of one of these stocks that a lot of people think that the government won't or can't touch. Uh, but my guess is that uh, it will. There's enough people on both sides of the aisle uh, that uh, dislike Mr. Zuckerberg now and some of the uh, things that he has pulled uh, and basically, you know, lied to their faces. So, you you generally want to back one horse or the other in politics uh, and have them keep everybody else off your back. Uh, but I don't think they have. I think everybody's mad at them now. Uh, so they are immensely uh, problematic for um, and going forward. Uh, of course, uh, other ones in that same space uh, that just by the letter of the law, uh, is amazingly guilty of antitrust, is Amazon. Uh, most people don't know that there's a huge uh, uh, canon of law about making vertical markets, and that's exactly what Microsoft or Amazon has done, is made vertical markets that no one else uh, can answer, and of course, at the size that they have, nobody can compete against. Uh, when we look at things like, uh, what's it, UPS, I mean, uh, they actually had a fairly good earnings, but they're going after other folks. Uh, two, I think a lot of people were way too short uh, this going into earnings. Uh, you did fill the gap, which is kind of amazing on this. Um, but, you know, you're right back up to the top on this. Uh, other stocks of interest uh, from earnings this morning uh, is Caterpillar. It was down. Uh, it's got some decent volume out here. Of course, they're saying tariffs are a lot of the issue. Uh, they weren't doing well before tariffs were announced. They had a problem. Uh, what else did we have out here this morning that I was thinking of? Boeing, uh, down a little bit. They got uh, what, they, what you really find out is they've got a huge cash burn. So that means that they're kind of hiding some of the losses from the ground at 737 maxes. Uh, it's hard to uh, say that you, you know, where that billion dollars went in the last quarter uh, for having them grounded, but that's a, basically what it's cost them uh, to reimburse a lot of the airlines for those planes not flying. 
So we can look at about a billion dollars a quarter. If we looked at Facebook um, with much higher margins than Boeing has, a billion really does kind of matter. Uh, don't have a huge amount of volume out here yet. I thought maybe they would have weakness back down to three uh, hundred and thirty bucks. Um, and again, probably plus thirty, thirty-five bucks if they give a date on when they'll be back in the air with the seven thirty-seven maxes. Uh, but nothing so far today, and uh, that's it. So I, I probably wouldn't be short them now. Uh, but you know, any day they could come out and say whether they are or not, that we'll be flying again November 1st. And as I said, I think that puts a cork in the end of the Boeing deal if they actually can say that, at least for the short term. I uh, got a email in about the SMHs uh, and it says, what do you think of the SMHs at broken resistance? Um, well, it's going to have the volume. I was uh, got to 123 uh, 23. If this thing doesn't instantly reverse by the close today, you're kind of up there. What I dislike is just the energy off this May 29th low has been, uh, well, let's call it 25% lighter than the move down from the April 24th high. Uh, the big thing I see is just the amount of people willing to short the SMHs over the last handful of days has gone to zip. That means if we do get a market correction, there aren't a lot of people to buy this thing and you only have sellers. So I kind of like uh, being short. I think I shorted this today at 122.90 and was looking for a huge reversal before the end of the day, but it doesn't look like we're going to get it. Uh, I've already covered that, so whatever, I lost 20 or 30 cents on a $123 stock. But that should have reversed today if we were looking for lower prices in the next few days. Uh, keep a very close eye on it. You do not have a lot of volume. Again, you're looking for at least 7 million shares. You have a 13, almost 14 million share low back on May 29th. So you have a high volume low that has not been tested. You got a lot of gaps down below and rather dubious upgrades over the last week on all these, which always makes me think distribution in these. You can give me a call at 877-927-6648. Eight, but uh, certainly we're kind of close on those things. Uh, what else do we have out here that we want to look at? Do, 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 do. We looked at TLT. And okay, when we come back, uh, we'll start looking at all the earnings from uh, last night and this morning. And uh, we'll go through them as quickly as we can. If you're in the CD market and looking for a secure investment, the Tiger First Mortgage Program may work for you. The security for these first mortgages are building lots in the Tax Opportunity Zone in St. Petersburg, Florida. The Tax Act of 2018 set up tax-free zones across the country where you can build and hold for 10 years and pay no tax on the profits, which makes these lots valuable. The investment is anywhere from $30,000 to $75,000. The interest paid is 7% yearly paid on a monthly basis. According to Bankrate.com, the best rate for a four-year CD in the country as of February 20th is 3.1%. A $50,000 investment at a normal four-year CD rate of 3.1% would give you income of $1,550 per year or $6,200 over the four-year period. That same $50,000 investment in a Tiger First Mortgage Program would give you $3,500 per year or $14,000 over the four years. Which would you prefer, $6,200 or $14,000 of interest on your investment? If you would like more information about the Tiger First Mortgage Program, you can call me at 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. If you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and a must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. From all aspects of the markets, including stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. Stay informed each day you trade and get that competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. 
TFNN.com. Educating investors. Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD, Directions Daily CSI 300 China A share bull and bear ETFs. China A shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. And we're going to go through uh, the earnings from last night and just this morning as fast as we can. Anthem. Electronics distributors, a uh, little disappointing. Got down to 280, back up around 290 now. Uh, no real juice back into the previous highs. Wasn't horrible, but didn't have any kind of sign of strength. Uh, other stocks out here. Uh, Amphenol, which makes connectors for uh, semiconductors and uh, many other areas of any kind of electricity. Also whiffed. One of the reasons why I was kind of uh, thinking that uh, the SMHs might have some uh, bigger uh, risk involved than we've seen so far today, uh, down fairly uh, significantly and with some strong volume. Not a good sign for that uh, entire SMH sector. Uh, Boeing, of course, we talked about a little while ago. Um, kind of surprised that it didn't go down more, although maybe a lot of that's already priced in. And what else do we have? Do, do, do. Okay. And we've got Rich from Oregon. How are you doing today, Rich? Good, Dave. Thanks for taking my call. Ultra Crane Holdings. So you're yes. looking at the – go ahead. Well, I was looking at it. it it's been – sort of a dismal performer since uh, 2017, but it's shown like it's sticking its head up a little bit. Do you see anything there in your oscillators that tells you it really is, or is this just a head fake? I don't know. I don't know if you could call it a head fake per se, um, but, you know, just off the bottom, you could get 19 bucks, 1909, the June 9th high and could just be in a huge trading range. So today you've got a little bit of a sign of strength. See how that closes out here today. You certainly would like to see a little bit better sign of strength, kind of like you had on May 3rd, and this was up on 2 million shares. You're up today with about 700,000 shares so far. So again, is that the end of it? No, could it stumble up to 19 bucks? Yes. Uh, I just watch it very closely. I think you've got a handful of days, as I said at the beginning of the show, where we're probably just going sideways or higher into the FOMC meeting now, and then uh, fund buying after that. So we've kind of we've kind of missed the storm. I just don't see a, a lot of upside for the indexes themselves, and that is problematic because you you know if you don't have any real market uh, movement. There's not a lot of wind at your back. Um, I would watch it closely. Uh, what price are you in? Uh, well, no, I was looking to get in. Okay. Um, I mean, you really want to buy it at fourteen fifty if you can on a light volume pullback, maybe even all the way to thirteen dollars and twelve cents at February sixth high. Um, but the way this is set up right now, 
it, it wouldn't be, as far as I can tell, it wouldn't be a huge, uh, significant run, but just kind of stumble up to nineteen dollars and nine cents. So maybe another three or four bucks. Um, but I don't think it would be a great trade. You came down on a lot of energy. You're up on fairly light energy from the March 8th high, high low out here, where it found support at a couple of gaps. So, you know, if you were if you were in this, I think maybe you could stay in it. If you're trying to buy it, you need it to pull back on very light volume. And, you know, okay. more than likely the next couple of days could, I don't know what the short uh, numbers are on this. It could just stumble up as it squeezes a lot of shorts out. I'm seeing that in many stocks out here today. That is not a lot of volume, uh, not a lot of shorting, but just a lot of squeezing of uh, people up here at the highs. And they've got earnings coming out next week on the 31st. Yeah. So maybe it just kind of stumbles up to 19 bucks, you know, between now and then. Uh, but again, and they've got a kind of more of a gamble, short. more of a gamble than I could say a excellent trade. But I think you got till Wednesday next week. So okay, you got it. I got it. Thanks again, okay. Dave. Thanks for the call. Appreciate it. Bye. You bet. Uh, CMG. Uh, of course, they came out with earnings. And uh, do, 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 what do we got here? Eh. You know, you, you did break out. You didn't really hold it. Um, again, kind of a short squeeze move uh, back into these highs. Not, uh, I mean, volume's okay today, but it's not really that big. Um, I would have looked, if I was wanting to pull the trigger of, of shorting it at about uh, eight, uh, seven eighty nine. I'd watch this over the next few days. Days. But again, I'm not going to be thinking that there's probably a good opportunity to short these until next Wednesday. And then, of course, you get into fund buying. That makes it even more problematic. We could drift up into the first couple of days of August uh, before we have any significant pullback now. But again, everything tells me that there's not that much higher out here in the market. And uh, especially, you know, with some of these big tech companies having the problem with antitrust, you don't know when that uh, knock on the door is going to come. Um, FCX, little pop out here today. And this one, not a lot of juice so far. Uh, you've got uh, about 14 million shares compared to eh, about 17, even 22 million shares back in this uh, area in mid-June. So you're really not blowing through that uh, in, in volume. Uh, you do have the opportunity, though, uh, if it holds this price to maybe stumble up to about $13.25. Uh, but, you know, without a sign of strength in the next couple of days, I think that's about it most you can look at it. iRobot was the loser after the bell. Again, these guys have some massive moves. They had that last time uh, in, uh, yeah, last earning cycle, duplicated it today. Now, you got two giant gap downs. What you're waiting for is the third gap down in iRobot. Um, I'm going to say that this is the textbook three gap play setup. And you get that third gap. Um, you may not want to instantly buy it, but you want to watch that gap for a possible buy. Uh, so keep an eye on that one. Do, 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 do. But you, you know, it's going to gap down another 20 bucks or something. I'll give you a good idea that maybe 50 bucks uh, or so might be the place where you want to keep an eye on that one. Um, we talked about Snap a little bit earlier. Tupperware, another one of the big losers. Uh, yeah, you know, no Tupperware parties anymore. I don't know what's going on with them. And of course, uh, it's just plastic, which is now available everywhere. I never really understood currently the business model for Tupperware, maybe there's more going on than I know of. Uh, down, huge volume, broke everything. Um, just uh, the uh, super uh, loser horn. I don't know if we can say anything about that other than that. Eh, that's it. Loser horn, which I could not find. Oh, I'll, I'll let you know. 
Be back in a... I'm certain you are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as our number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last 12 12, six, and three months. Timer Digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well. The fact is, markets can be timed, and I'll teach you the exact set of tools that I use that has transformed me into one of the best at what I do. Sign up for Mastering Probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of TFNN.com and get immediate access to workshops where I take you step-by-step -step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. Sign up today. David White's newsletter, The Technology Insider, is focused like a laser on finding the next big things in technology. If you had invested only $10,000 in Microsoft in 1986, you'd have been a millionaire by 2000. Disruptive technology like Microsoft's is the key to these massive long-term profits, and The Tech Insider is the vehicle from TFNN to capitalize on these opportunities. This is the go-to newsletter that identifies, monitors, and profits on mostly little-known cutting-edge companies with great long-term prospects. David's experience is as an inventor of Emmy-winning animation products for TV and Hollywood that propelled a company public. Match that with 14 years as a full-time trader, and he's uniquely qualified to guide you through the light-speed world of ever-evolving high-tech. If you're ready to ride the next big technology bull market for less than $40 per month, log on to TFNN.com and get your two-week free trial to the Technology Insider. Get in on the ground floor of the next big thing today. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. Catch Tom O'Brien, professional trader and educator, founder of TFNN, also a special guest on CNBC. Tom will bisect and dissect the markets. The Tom O'Brien Show, next on TFNN. And we're back. Uh, tomorrow, i got a little treat for you, so you want to make sure and check in. Something I've been working on for a little while. It's a double top secret, but uh, I think you'll enjoy it. So uh, I'll just make sure that I finally got the rest of my work done and I could show it tomorrow. So we'll see about that. Uh, no, no, uh, no need to uh, jinx it. Uh, other things going on, that's about it. We're up, what, 14 points. Um, don't see a lot of other reasons to get too excited. Um, being up eight and a half points on the S&P cash. And again, the volume just now cresting 4 billion shares. We ended up with just at 6 billion shares yesterday, which again is about half the uh, volume that we had uh, before, uh, you know, last Christmas, six months ago, whatever. We were up uh, pushing these highs. So again, we continue to push highs, lighter and lighter volume. Uh, nothing that really says that the market's going to crack. We had a lot of stocks that were giving signals the last couple of days. Those have been negated today. Uh, doesn't mean that we've got a much higher market, though, coming for us, but I do think we could stumble up all the way to uh, the FOMC meeting now unless we have a giant whiff in something like Facebook or the rest of them. But even then, my guess is that no one believes the markets can go lower. 
And that's always what makes me incredibly nervous. Uh, that's about it. Uh, again, uh, double top secret thing I'm going to show tomorrow that I've been working on for a while. So you want to tune in for that. Keep an eye on that. Next uh, couple hours, of course, with Tom O'Brien, he'll be going you through uh, the earnings. And, of course, uh, tomorrow morning we got more. So it's a never it's it's a never stop 24/7 earnings now for a little while so keep uh, keep on that. Anyway, we'll be uh, here tomorrow same bat channel same bat time. Remember to sell when you can or even cover when you can, not when you have to. <laughs>